So what's the answer to our puzzle uh, of the uh, zonal component needed uh, to uh, negate or uh, compensate for the beta effect? Uh, we had come up with this very small number. Obviously, the problem was uh, of ignoring C1 and C2 in these equations. We can we have to use uh, observed uh, wind speeds to find uh, U C1 and C2 to match the magnitudes, and then we will get a realistic solution for uh, the d squared uh, U dy squared uh, needed to compensate for the beta effect. Okay. Let's move on to interaction of vertices. You know, even if you had a quiescent background, if you had multiple vertices uh, rotating in the same direction and uh, close enough to each other, which in a cyclone uh, turns out to be about 13, 1400 kilometers, then they begin to influence each other and the net outcome will depend on uh, the strength of each other and the strength of uh, each relative to the other and multiple outcomes are possible. Here is an example of a GOES 12 IR image at 2015 UTC from uh, 6 September 2005. It's uh, looking at Maria, Nate and Ophelia uh, uh, and their movement relative to, a relative to a centroid point here. The situation would result in complex Fujiwara effect of each storm on the motion of uh, the others. So they, you can see if you project them onto a centroid with respect to each other they are moving and this can be seen here in this way. Centroid uh, relative track of a pair of interacting tropical cyclones. Uh, centroid relative track uh, illustrating the four stages of a storm-storm interaction. Uh, A is the approach here and C is uh, the capture, so then one gets uh, trapped around another one or they trap and begin a dance around each other. And in M they have a mutual orbit around each other and then, uh, sorry, in orbit. O they have an orbit around each other and then they may end up merger or they may fly off and escape uh, each other. Okay, So here are two cyclones approaching each other they are uh, being captured into each other's influence and either orbiting into each other or end up being uh, merging into one uh, vertex or they might just escape each other. So the environmental advection of an identical vertex pair in a zonally sheared environment is modulated by 1. The sense and magnitude of the environmental shear and the vorticity gradient. So the shear of the environment is going to uh, alter the vertical uh, vorticity of the uh, cyclones and the gradient of vorticity. And the earth vorticity gradient itself, the beta effect, uh, we are in a beta plane let's say, and the development of a link between the two vertices that then leads them to move as one system for three or more days of their evolution. Uh, this happens about less than two times per year in the North Atlantic and I think maybe two or three times in uh, every other year or so. So it's different frequency in the uh, typhoon region. Okay, Here are some examples. This is from NOAA and you can see that there are two vertices. They end up merging and then become one and dissipate away and here you can see them orbiting into each other and then also merging. Okay, so this is from 2012. I think this one is from 2019, if I'm not mistaken. Here is one of Australia. Here is Java and uh, Australia here. So you can see the two systems uh, coming together. One coming this way. This is 27E uh, S. I think this was called Sarejo or some such thing. They merge together and go off into. Uh, uh, south and west as uh, we know they should uh, with the beta drift. The beta drift is what we talked about before in terms of the beta gyres forming and then distorting the vertex and then uh, uh, drifting the cyclone because of the beta effect that uh, exists because of the planetary vorticity gradient. Okay, We'll look at a little bit more details of the Fujiwara effect 
uh, in the next podcast. This is just an introduction uh, at how the vertex interactions uh, happen. You can see a lot of these animations on the uh, on the web. You can look for those. There are some nice animations that show how models can generate these multiple vertices and their interactions. This happens not only with cyclones. You can generate in uh, generate these in a lab as well, but in the environment uh, at large planetary scale, the relative vorticity is important and their uh, fear of influence has to be, uh, will occur only when they are uh, close enough to each other, as you can expect. Um, but obviously the planetary gradient of relative vorticity is again very important and they can modify the beta drift of each other and have either, as we said, orbiting around each other, merging or escaping each other, depending on the intensity of each of the vortex. Um, let's just add to this uh, uh, Fujiwara uh, effect uh, also by looking at the structure and motion. Uh, structure and intensity impacts on cyclone motion. We looked at this before in terms of the cyclone size, cyclone strength, which is maximum winds in, in a band that's outside the eye wall, and intensity is the uh, maximum sustained winds in the eye wall uh, that we looked at. Uh, so how does the uh, cyclone motion relate to all these things. Turns out that there is basically no relation between intensity and cyclone motion, but when the cyclone strength in terms of maximum uh, uh, winds are uh, uh, computed at 3 to 4 degree uh, radius uh, latitudes, uh, there is a relation uh, the stronger uh, cyclones tend to drift more westward and the the deviation of the uh, environmental winds and the direction of the cyclone tends to be higher and the cyclone is uh, very strong in terms of these uh, maximum winds uh, and the size also seems to have a relation uh, that a larger cyclone tends to uh, move faster not necessarily the indication of a direction, but just in terms of its speed. Some of the cyclones get very large, like Typhoon Tip, uh, Super Typhoon Tip from 1979 had uh, over a thousand kilometers, uh, whereas most of the others tend to be much smaller. So the size does, at that size, it basically doesn't care about the weather systems that are around in the environment. It creates its own uh, winds strong enough to uh, propagate itself. So in that case, the size of the um, Str larger the size of the cyclone, the stronger uh, or the faster its uh, movement and not necessarily the direction. It doesn't say anything about the direction. Okay, So there are relations between the uh, structure and intensity of uh, the cyclone and their impact on the cyclone motion. But ag again, we are being rather descriptive here. So it uh, depends on many other factors like vertical shear, uh, the Fujiwara effect that we talked about and uh, various other factors that uh, need to be considered when we are looking at overall uh, direction. But the goal of uh, predictions is of course to uh, make sure that the models are able to capture these relations between structure, intensity and the um, propagation of the cyclone itself. Mm.